Let's go into Raw. Let's do it. Freddie Prince Jr. Now, last week, I was knocking this guy. Yeah. On why this guy is so going to be I. hosting Raw. Yeah, hosting Raw. But you know what? I saw him. I liked his attitude. I like the way he was going with things. He is an actor. He did a very good job. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I am going back on my words, and I'm saying that Freddie Prince Jr., you know, in my I'm eyes, not. he did all right. You know, because, well, let me tell you why. Because he brung up saying that he was a hardcore fan. Right. That he was a fan back in the days. Right. When he was a kid, that he used to have those little tiny little toys that looked nothing like the original wrestlers. Right. And they only did one move, which was either you had him in the headlock in the spring action arm, or you had the Ultimate Warrior with just the, the uh, spring action arms doing the gorilla press kind of type thing. Right. You know, I had those toys too. Right. And uh, I got excited for that. Right. And then he mentioned the the um, the VHS tapes with the home coliseum with which I still have a gang of those. And you know what? I had those too. As a matter of fact, I had the Undertaker one, mm -hmm. and then I had the match between the Undertaker and the Ultimate Warrior. Mm -hmm. I had all kinds of stuff on that. There was even a Mister Perfect one, I believe. Yeah. And then he brung up you what you mentioned. Uh, I I don't know if you mentioned. Last week or the week after before that, but yeah. you mentioned the old ice cream sandwiches. Yes, sir. The old WWE yes, or sir. WWF ice cream. But sandwiches. he said they hurt his stomach. They didn't hurt my stomach. <laughs> Those ice creams are the best, man. Uh, you know, That's I, where he lost me there. That was like I kind of felt like it was written. I was like, no, nah, those ice creams never hurt nobody. But when he said all that stuff, I got excited and I was like, all right, let's do this. I want to see Raw. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. I understand your point because. He sounded like he was true as a real WWE fan. He might have been. He might be. Who knows? I don't know the guy, but I'm not gonna fall for this Hollywood stuff. And I'm not. I, I didn't like it. I didn't. I I know he's an actor. He could have sold me. He could have sold a movie right there. Who knows? I don't know. So music hits, and it sounds like a thriller kind of drama kind of type, uh, <laughs> like a horror kind of type song. Right. And here comes a man with this rain slicker on, and it kind of looked like from I know what you did last summer. Mm-hmm. And when they come out, you hear this guy saying, I know what you did 12 summers ago, you know, which I thought was kind of funny to reveal that it was Santino. I love this guy. That was, that saved it for me. That actually made, made me laugh. And that was pretty good. Santino is the best. Now, you know, I can't really say much for his wrestling skills because he hasn't been showing it lately, you know, but his mic skills is just superb. I think he's it's the classic. best. The best mic skills in classic. the WWE right now can easily fit in any generation. Oh, easily. You just, know? He's just awesome right now. And he what turned out to be uh, he was just auditioning for Freddie Prince Jr. Yeah. So I liked it. Um, the only thing I do have to say about Freddie Prince Jr. was that they didn't give him a lot of time on the mic, which made it a little bit more about Raw. Instead of about the the Hollywood thing, and I was kind of happy about that. So, out walks uh, Randy Orton, the WWE Heavyweight Champion, right? And he comes out and uh, kind of threatens uh, Freddie Prince Jr., saying that, "Hey, you know what? Um, remember what I did to whatever his name was, uh, mm -hmm. Robot Chicken Dude, mm -hmm. Seth Green." Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't want to be in this match. And Freddie Prince Jr. St stuck to his gun, said, hey, you know what? Slaughter made that match last week, and I'm going to enforce it. Mm -hmm. And he goes ahead, and um, Freddie Prince Jr. turns his back as he was walking out of the ring. Orton grabs him in a reverse headlock and then follows it up with a backbreaker. It was dumb looking. You know, Too yeah. Too much time spent there. I didn't know if Randy Orton got scared he was going to hurt him or if he kind of paused because he didn't he knew if he had the right positioning. Or if Freddie Prince Jr. wasn't ready. I didn't know what was going on there. I kind of got lost for that second. And this is the reason why I don't believe Hollywood should be there. It stopped the show for me. And it wasn't believable when Freddie Prince Jr. was telling the world champion to his face that he's going to wrestle. Well, I'm pissed off about next week's host. But we'll, more on that later. All right. Let's see. Uh, what else? So they went ahead and um, they came back from commercial. Jerry King Lawler apologized for Orton's... Um, ordeal what he did to Freddie Prince Jr. and then they had the United States Championship um, I believe it was on the line with Carlito with Rosa Mendez Shunty. in his corner yep um, which was weird yeah so I don't know why they're they're teaming her up with him why is it because he has a mustache now and he looks more chuntier than ever before 
you know, I don't know, but he's got to get rid of that mustache. He had the, he didn't have the mustache the first time. He was a hell of a heel, very popular heel, and not even that he was still big, like big. Like I mean, get rid of the mustache, Carlito. Now you know I I did mention that sometimes in past shows that sometimes Rosa Mendez she Chante. looks good, Chante. and then sometimes she looks a little haggard. She's lame, dude. She looks like a she version of Ronald McDonald, man. <laughs> Sorry, she is just. I mean, horrible. she does look. She does look hot sometimes. No. Like last Monday, she no. did look a little hot. No, but then no, there no. is days where she kind of looks like a tranny. No, no, I'm sorry. no. I'm sorry. I just I don't see it. I don't see it. So anyway, um, let's see. But that match was awesome. And, um, let's see. This whole match uh, lasted about nine minutes and twenty one minutes. Well you know? deserved. It, yeah, it was a great match. I think it well was deserved. Great timing. Um, Finally, Kofi Kingston getting some kind of push with that title. Let's uh, let's see. Carlitos hits the swinging neckbreaker for the one-two, mm-hmm. and then sets up for the backstabber. Right. But then Kofi Kingston sees it, turns it around, throws him against the ropes. There's a, a miss there, and then turns it into a swinging paradise trouble in paradise kick, mm-hmm. which looked very well. Uh, you know, very good. Very good. Very good. Knocks out Carlito. Your champion still. The United States champion right. Kofi Kingston. Very excellent match, man. I was just I was in love with that match. Now I believe that this is the f- first match, first real match Kofi Kingston's been in in a while. I think so because he was actually sweating. So and you know nine minutes 21, 21 seconds that's pretty good. And who better than Carlito? Yeah. I mean even if the feud wasn't going to go anywhere, if they weren't going to build anything with it, it was something. Raw needed. They needed some actual wrestling going on. Do you think they are position? Uh, geez, positioning. I can't. Why can I even say that word? <laughs> positioning. Yes, that too. Mm-hmm. Carlito to be the next United States champion. I don't see why not. They have to build that brother feud somehow. And what better way to do it than with a title on the line? It's the only way that feud is going to become very big. And I don't see it. I don't see. Kofi Kingston lo- losing any of his fan base if he loses that title. I mean, this is something. I mean, Kofi Kingston's held that title for a while. He hasn't been pushed. Uh, I blame that on WWE, not on, on him. And if Carlito wants to take that title and run with it and, and start a feud with, with Primo again, I mean, it's gonna. No matter what they do, it's gonna work with that. Carlito or Kofi Kingston, no matter what they're gonna do, it's gonna work. Those guys can go. So they, the next segment, they showed a old uh, DX video. Some of their old stuff from the very beginning to the mid with the Road Dog and Badass Billy Gunn and X Pac. Yeah. And um, until they are here now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 you know what? I was a DX fan. I was never I liked a DX it. fan. I liked the idea because they were going against the hearts. But, you know, again, DX, they were on that tag team DVD. And you know lame, what? They lame, don't lame, do lame. one double team at all. Have you noticed that? They don't. They Be- don't do one double team at all. Because they're not a real tag team. I can care less how many times they've tagged before, who they fought, how many times they've won. It doesn't matter. They're not a real tag team. They're an individual uh, superstar. They don't care about each other. The only reason why they do, they're our friends, but they don't care each other as a tag team because that's not their focus. I don't see any. They that- don't make that tag team division or the tag team title look any better if they were champions or if they were not they don't do anything for tag team no they don't they they're just i'm sorry that's why i've never liked dx they were lame they've always been lame the only thing i ever liked was saying suck it at work because it was everyone knew what it meant well you it know was funny i mean no double backdrops it was no just, I mean, no just double suplex. Lame. i'm sorry dx is lame i mean I no double flapjacks you know i'm not i i, I they they don't do anything and how they're recognized as this is where the team. tivo goes off right now where's around bloop, bloop, oh I, yeah i fast bloop, forward it. fast forward it because sure it's did. just dumb and it's getting old and i tell you what i fast forwarded to i fast forwarded to the beginning of the match which was the best match of the night and i'm talking about the new Miz versus yeah. Evan Bourne. Yeah, excellent. 